This is Spice FM. The show is the adults in the room. And you know what? Today is Thursday. You know what we do on Thursday? On Thursday, Tunatuma Salamu. It is Shout Out Thursday where you all and I are going to shout out our loved ones, people we like, our spouses, our boyfriends, our sisters. And you can do that to our social media handles, Spice FM KE on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. You could also call in on 0719 to 600 But don't call in now. Call in 45 minutes from now. That's the time we're going to be taking shout outs. And before we get into the hot topic, and the hot topic today is going to be something very different. And because it's, the reason it's different is because we have a guest. But before I get to that guest, can we mark the roll call? Yes, we most definitely can. I see a bunch of comments coming in. Thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate you. Uh, Mamba Kenneth, I see you. Raphael, I see you. I'm marking you present. Donald, I also see you marking you present. Oti Gabi, I see you. Anthony Kyoto, Kyoko, I'm sorry, I see you. Uh, Evelyn, I see you. Uh, Xavier, I see you. Dennis Kilonzo, please keep those comments in as we enter this new conversation. Oti Gabi, anasema kwa lugha yetu tunasema dongo koro. Have I said it correctly? The guests will tell me whether I have said it correctly. Demi Kilonzo, tumekuona on Twitter. Linda Louise, I have missed you. Uh, it's good to see you again. Bernard, you are present. And Karigo is saying to everyone on Twitter, anata Please, please, please use the hashtag adults ke and if you're in nairobi 94.4 mnyeri 90.9 mombasa 87.9 and of course watch us live yes spicefm.co.ke yes you get to see all of our pretty faces please 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 kindly now if you're joining the conversation today is thursday you know what we do at eight o'clock eight to ten we segue in into a conversation that is actually pertinent to us. Sometimes it becomes personal. Sometimes it's sober. Sometimes it's inspiring. Sometimes it's a conversation that help us just open our eyes and look at things different. Today is a very special day for us. We have a guest. We have someone who is known in those social media circles as the Rick's poet. Can you go by it correctly? Yes, you have. It's called the Rick's poet. Point. Yes, you have. But <laughs> ID, what the government knows him <laughs> and what the money apps know him or his mobile wallet, he's called Onyango Otieno. Onyango Otieno is an advocate, an artist, an entrepreneur, and a survivor of rape. And he's overcome depression. And most importantly, what I have learned about him in the last 72 hours, he actually encourages people and he's reached out to people who are into depression. And one of the things that he advocates that I'm going to be asking him later on, he's been advocating about self-awareness, about post-traumatic stress, about issues of rape, and about men and cleanliness and hygiene. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go to his TL. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Onyango Otieno, how are you, sir? Happy, healthy, fantastic. Good. It's now, good do me a favor. Aren't you just pull the mic a little bit next to you? Closer to me? Yes, just thank you. Yes, much better. Oh, okay. And then the way I, you know, I've had you do your poetry. Yeah. You know that voice, that the upaze sauti. I'd like you to do that for us. <laughs> okay, yes. yes, I know you're putting that romantic voice, but I want us to also hear you <laughs> out. <laughs> so, okay. who is Onyango Otieno? Uh, those things you've just said. Now you say, me, those, <laughs> me, those are my homework. <laughs> but who are you? How you would you describe how yourself? Yeah. Yes, how would you describe yourself? A lover of life, mm -hmm. um, a writer, a poet, an artist. Um, I love tea very much. I like Hallelujah. to make that known. Mm. You can be um, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> and I love music and I love people. Yeah. And I love courage as well. Mm. Yeah, I think I describe myself as a courageous child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like so the part that you said you love courage yes. and you're a courageous person. Yes. And allow me to start with the first question. Uh -huh. When you talk about courage, I, I read about it in some of your socials mm -hmm. and some of the clips that have been online that at the age of 16, is it 14 or 16, between mm -hmm. there, you went through an ordeal. And now that you're seated here, it, it reminds me that, yes, you are a, you are a courageous boy yeah. and you are a courageous man. Yeah. Care to share? Man, there's a lot to share there. Um, you have a platform mm. today. <laughs> and we are all ears. <laughs> um, so this is in response to the sexual abuse or something else? 
Yes. Uh, were you abused at that particular age? No, I, I was abused differently at that particular age. Mm. Please share oh, with maybe, us. Maybe we can begin with at what age did the abuse begin? Did you first experience abuse? Um, so I grew up in a violent home. Okay. Like my mom and dad were like crazy WWF wrestlers. Mm. Really, like, it was crazy. Wow. Mm. And it was that of like physical, like corner to corner so frequently mm -hmm. and that meant like there was a lot of uh, childhood abandonment that i felt because people were the adults in the house were busy catering to themselves yeah. and i was yes. just there being a firstborn um not having any other older brother or sister to talk to that was tough and uh, my dad was also very abusive towards me. That's mm. like really physically. And mm -hmm. of course, those it comes with emotion, emotional abuse and, and all that. Um, when and did it start? So my me if my me memory serves me right, I just remember a particular incident mm -hmm. that happened to me when I was 10 years mm -hmm. that changed my life completely. Because um, I was used to being beaten even way younger. When you say beating, yeah. is it like slap slaps? Ama mangumi like, mangumi? Ama with a ama mic? Ama cha umbo. So, mm -hmm. ilikuwa nenda, nika budali likuwa na graduate, you know, like ah. the older I became, the, ah. the, the, the tougher, the, you know. So it wasn't a belt thing. It so, was so, ilianza nga na slippers, okay. na ma belt. Mm. For no apparent reasons. No, well, you know, kids do make mistakes or what parents do feel are mistakes and, you know, discipline and whatever. Um, I mean, I was, Okay, fairly cheeky, but not of like evil, you yeah. know. Mm. So, but I just felt like the punishments were too severe. Mm -hmm. But you don't know how these things affect you until you start getting older. And then yes. you start realizing, hey, I say, mom, kuna kitu umefanya hapo. Kuna venye mefanya ni feel. So when I was 10, uh, there was a time um, we lived in Huruma Estate. And it was a single room which had like some small corridor for a kitchen. Yes. And this day, my, both my parents are teachers. So this day, my, my dad comes back home and he's looking for some Bill Cosby novel. Bill Cosby was huge those days. Mm. Yes. So a Bill Cosby novel was a big deal. Yani it's like Oprah doing a, a book today, you mm. know. Mm. <laughs> and so, I mean, there were so many educational books in the house, which, I mean, it made me hate that house because mm. it felt like, ni mm. Yeah, because mm. your, your parents yeah. are educators. It's like, yo, soma, 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 kila yes. sa, kila sa. And that wasn't really my... I just, I wanted to be a child, you mm. know. Yeah. Come back in the evening, play like everybody else, and, you know, do homework if I have to, eat and sleep. So, <laughs> my dad starts looking for this book, and he's not finding it, he's not finding it. And, um some devil from somewhere mm. told him to ask me come and mean on a book might you have been the one to, who took the book so like in many of our homes suspicions grow to accusations mm. in a blink yes yeah. very quickly <laughs> before you even realize okay what's going on yeah. one to a hundred eh, toy mm. kitabu wendo umechukua hiyo kitabu mm. mama yako anaweza iba kitabu si wendo unasoma <laughs> kwa hii nyumba mm. can your uncle steal a book can the house guard steal a book yes. as in what is your answer to that mm. yes and me that time man like body mass was already too much like mm -hmm. you know i was a classic student and i mean i didn't like like novels novels like i the way i used to see girls around me do that mm -hmm. and i think also the trauma of having been told like you have to be reading all the time mm -hmm. and your childhood is being robbed from you just made me hate books generally I see. Mm -hmm. so my dad starts beating me up and this night it was a little different um he he you know you know those uh, copper wires for like telephone telephone wires the yes. ones you see when you're traveling yeah yes those ones i she she can use stuff acha na na huyu ah acha kiswahili namsumbua who was that zangu askiangi kiswahili namsumbua kidogo okay you're going to go with the flow <laughs> yes yes, <laughs> yes we will. so like these telephone copper wires like are really tough you know yes. and our mother used to hang clothes with them, mm. you know, and so they were like outside the balcony. So mm. my dad gets out and then he comes back and he strips me off my clothes. And I was a really tiny dude, like nine, ten, you're mm. a kid. Yeah. Mm. So he starts beating me up with this telephone wire 
and my dad used to beat you with his soul it wasn't mm. at your at your it's kubahati. just you know it's just a small thing of dance mm. it was tara every mm. time it was like all his angry moments would come back to that one moment was yes. it only you or also your siblings mm. i was like my my follower was if i was 10 my follower was 3 years old that time oh, oh, so wow. it was a big difference way big yes yes so you couldn't beat us the same way i mean that was mm. a kid yes now uh, just just on that point um you know a, a lot of a lot of us will say that uh, you know uh, spank the, I, i can't remember the spell the road and spoil spare the child yeah. yes yeah, the so a, a lot of us might might see this as purely parents disciplining for you do you think there was a distinction between being disciplined and it now transitioning into something else i didn't like all of it mm. i didn't even like the fact that you know when we think of discipline we think of instilling pain into kids mm. we don't think of reasoning with kids brains we think of pain yes mm. and pain doesn't work as a correctional measure it never works yes, yes. can i ask a very tiny question yeah. do you see other kids being beaten the same way So now when you're being beaten it's in the house so you you don't really see it like that yeah but, yeah, but sometimes like you'd see kids being beaten outside mm-hmm. and it was almost like just bad mm-hmm. um but i i guess like my dad just went overboard sometimes okay. you know yeah because even what was different about this night was like it didn't end there like because he kept saying you know produce the book produce the book yeah. so i felt i had to lie today for me you know for him to let me go okay mm. so cuz i started bleeding and now I'm sweating and i'm crying and i'm shouting and yeah. it's at night and my mom can't do anything my uncle can't cuz my dad you wouldn't tell him anything wow. right so i say okay i took the book okay i can't remember where i said i took the book mm. because walks, maybe you thought it would stop yeah. the beating would yeah. stop yeah and which it did so he walks outside and then he comes back this time with a sisal rope right wow. as mm-hmm. if he'd planned all this stuff mm-hmm. and i'm i'm naked i'm like <laughs> you know mm-hmm. that last minute thing mm-hmm. and he looks at me straight in the eye and he says i'll do something to you that you will never forget mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so he ties my hands he walks to the kitchen he comes back with a kerosene jerry can mm-hmm. all right or paraffin i don't know which mm-hmm. one and then with the, and the, the match box Okay and 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 he puts it down and then he pours some kerosene on the the lid of the jerry can mm-hmm. and pours some of it on my hand mm-hmm. and flames a matchstick mm. and burns my hand wow okay. so this is why i have this the mark scar. here i'm right. sorry you know your mom never said anything about this or she could not they stop it just watching helplessly mm. That night changed my life yeah. yes. forever yeah. you were neighbors ten? i was 10 neighbors nothing Wow. Mm. Was your dad? They were used to the chaos in our house okay. like. Oh yeah, because yeah, you extent. said your mom uh, also like, had yo, issues. Man, that was WW like I don't know. Like, yeah. you mean it's now. crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, how did you trans- uh because you've also said th- no you've had physical abuse. Yeah. There's emotional abuse. Yeah. How did it come to be a sexual abuse? So, 10 years later, right? Oh. Yeah. Um I'm 20 now. Yes. I'm a from 6 student in uh, some Ugandan school. Mhm. And for that school in Uganda we would close for like two and two 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 months and two weeks all right mm-hmm. so that's like November mid like late November and then we open in uh, last week of January mm. but in Kenya guys go back to work and school in January yes the systems are different yeah they are different so I was just transitioning from from five to from six all right and the the january of 2009 everybody went back to work and then it found that like my 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 mom had hired a new house manager mm-hmm. house help house girl mm-hmm. um that december like just towards the end of december there about so people opened school and then all of a sudden you know i was left in the house with this stranger who i didn't know much about right yeah. i want you to hold that thought yes. because i need to go on a very yes, small please. commercial break okay if you're joining the conversation we're talking to onyango oteno also known as the rick's poet he's a survivor of abuse physical abuse from home he's a survivor of rape and he's overcome depression that's our conversation for today
Joining the conversation, this is Spice FM. The <coughs> show is the adults in the room. It's exactly 21 minutes past nine o'clock. Today, our conversation is with a gentleman. He's also known or commonly known on the social streets as Rick's Point, but his national name is Onyango Otieno. He's a survivor of rape and he's overcome depression. He's an advocate of very many things. And most importantly, today we're having a conversation with him. He just wants to inspire someone, encourage someone, and you never know he might just be giving you a bit of tips of how he went along now before we went on the break there's something that caught my eye uh you said you went through physical abuse to your family and uh, your father actually almost lit a poured kerosene on your arm and lit and you have a mark on it yeah. can i see the mark i was yes, very curious fact, about it he even has one on his hand which you which you just noticed yes yeah, so oh. here it is mm. um these days it's like a star on my skin yeah it's like yes. a reminder yeah it's yes. like it gave me the voice to yeah, i like that to speak pain to love mm. yeah so you have survived physical abuse emotional abuse at home yeah. and then there's this issue that comes about with rape that's yeah. where we stopped yeah continue my darling so i mean like, like life at home was always crazy you, you barely had time to breathe um I mean the misunderstandings or not you know so in between that 10 years i had run away from home like three times um became a street boy at some point um, at what age 16. Mm -hmm. yeah i came back home it, it was crazy so when i was 20 i mean i was a little stable um you know then this is when this thing is happening when like the, the house help is now a new person in the house and we are basically strangers you know yes um and then also because like we had been like we, we could go grown up with some house managers so it wasn't a very new thing to me if to me those are people who are at work and you know mm. life just goes on yeah so i mean i used to go hang out with my kenyan friends who we were with in the ugandan school because they were the only people at home and one of your friends is saying hi on social media rachel yeah. karyuki and i said go buddy i remember you from bungema yeah we were in uganda together mm -hmm. actually ah, yeah i was amazing. really quiet dude those days <laughs> um so yeah um so i i used to hang out with my kenyan buddies and then i'd come back home like around 3 p.m mm -hmm. and and those days we used to, like the beat was such a big thing and you know i'd watch like uh music on like mtv and stuff mm -hmm. so it's it's like 3 4 p.m and i'm just coming to chill back before everybody else comes back home yes so one day uh i i come back home and then i find tea on the table yeah my darling tea mm -hmm. on the table mm -hmm. so you didn't start this tea thing recently no, hey, it's like from before my friend yeah. so, <laughs> it's in the blood yeah so i mean our family like we are really tea people so my grandma so mm -hmm. i find tea and mandazi i adore mandazi wow very much like Hey, you're a real are, Kenyan. Those like, are pastries, Arnold. Pastries, African pastries. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I might not, I might not have been grow, grow up, grew, uh, I might not have grown up here, but I'm a Kenyan, okay. proper Kenyan. Yeah. <laughs> so pastries. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pulling it like. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I mean, I didn't even think <laughs> about it because I just felt mm. like, yeah, it's 4 p.m. It's just those things, you mm. know, like yes. chayajioni stuff. So, so this um is not abnormal it's not tea abnormal and mandazi yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah, abnormal. Yeah, of course yeah i mean it's not a like so special thing nothing. that's happening mm. yeah okay. so you just think it's those coward things that, yeah ah, okay she's thought of making tea and and okay so i have tea this time and i mean nothing nothing happens and, and stuff so three days later i come back home 3 p.m she had really studied my clock mm. Mm -hmm and this time when i found tea the mandazis were heart shaped ah. wow okay are you for real uh-huh they were heart shaped uh -huh. man like hey, those mandazis were like tamu like they were yes. really, like something yes. you know yes so I, w I was hooked you know like yo man <laughs> so you've spent the whole day with your boys and stuff you're coming back home and the first thing you have is a meal so yes. but i was a little curious like hmm why the hardship yeah like looks interesting mm. artistic yeah but interesting yes mm. still you don't think anything about it mm. now at, at this point had you met the person who was making these mandazis it's the nanny she, she's, yeah it's the, the the house manager so she wasn't it wasn't like she was 
new, like this was someone that you had interacted with at so least now, for like, a little we while. Were now together, like I'd been together now in the house, like for now, not like three weeks. Now. Okay, mm. right. Yeah. She was someone new though. It's, yeah, I mm. mean, in my life. In, you know, in like, your yeah. life, but was yeah. she new to the household? Yes, yes, mm. to okay. all of us, actually. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so, <laughs> so I start like having my tea and where I'm sat, like the the rest of the sofas are like on that stretch, mm -hmm. so I could tell that she's she's seated on the far end. Of, I mean, I'm not thinking about it; it's just subconsciously. Like, yeah. Yeah, there was a distance. There. there was social yeah, distance. Yeah, at that time, <laughs> and I mean, I'm having tea yes. at the corner and all that. Um, but one interesting thing also that I remember about because it's such a long time ago. Her cleavage was a bit more pronounced okay. that day. Okay. 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 Um, but still, you don't think about it because this is somebody who's working. And first of all, I also had never had like sex with a woman like physically mm. that time in my life. Mm. Would you say she seduced you? The story is coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I sort of start seeing her getting closer uh -huh. bit by bit. It was so mathematical, like very tactical. Mm. Mm -hmm. So but you're seated, you're yeah, eating um, from yeah. the corner of your eye. Yeah, you I'm saw her the yeah, distance, like, but yeah. and Akuja too. Yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly. You mm. know, it's like some snake that's just pimaing its prey. You know. Yes. Mm. So, at some point, somehow, somehow, she got there. You know, like mm. next to me. I'm watching music. I'm not really thinking through anything. So she reaches out to one of the mandazis and wants to feed me. Mm -hmm. And that is really awkward because I don't know you like that. Yes, you know? yes. So you must have been very confused. And there's no confusing. conversation that has been had yet. I think we were talking about, uh, about just small talk, okay. probably. Okay. Because, you know? um, I mean, all we had was small talk. There was never, like, anything to connect us or stuff. So I, I remember, you know, now I was so used to abuse in the house. Mm. So much that. And, and this is a brain thing. Like, every time... I sensed I was in danger, my brain would shut down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would just freeze and let that moment be and go. Because me, adults used to freak me out. Mm. Okay. Okay. So she, she, she wants to feed me, and I don't know how to react to that. Like, do you want something from me? Or is this a friendly gesture? Yes. What's going on? Yes. You know, Kumbeha, she's planned zero to a hundred in her head wow i have no idea what's going on mm. Mm. and even at that time when this thing was happening i didn't even know i had been abused i just thought it was one of those things that happened at home mm. okay mm. Yes. i knew this was abuse 10 years after it happened right all right yeah because of how subtle it was uh -huh. yeah so before i knew it yes she had put me on the living room table she was like dancing on me Wow. Okay. wow i didn't even know lap dancing was a thing i didn't even know it had a name yes because i've not been that, that experimental with girls like that i mean those days we used to have these polyphonic phones like you're watching porn some, some google and it's slow as hell right. on the page yeah. that was all you know mm. um and apparently people around me were having sex my age but i, I had no idea yeah mm. you hadn't been exposed yeah, like to that, that culture yet yeah okay so before i knew it i was in the bedroom yeah. And she 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 stripped me off like my 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 shorts, and you know biologically because of the confusion, you're like, is this a wrong thing? Is it a, a is it right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've never been with a woman like this, but this person we didn't even talk about this situation. Like she didn't ask for my consent, and I'm just there floating on yes. air. I don't know what's going on. So she had your way with you. Yes. If you're joining the conversation, we're having Onyango Otieno. He's a survivor of rape, physical violence from home, and he's overcome the depression. That's the conversation for today. Conversation, we're having a man who's decided to tell us yeah. what is going on. What are you seeing on social media, Karigo? Um, Okulo Manpower, he says, I really feel for the man. His dad was very inhumane. Bury the hatchet and move on. I, you know, people say, people always use that phrase, move on. Move on. Talking about moving move on, on. Uh, Rick Speak, you've talked about the issues of uh, surviving the physical abuse from your parents. Then we've gone into you uh, uh, being raped. 
and uh, this particular nanny who was supposed to be your caregiver, the parent at that time, took advantage of you. Now, allow me to plug on what Manpower said, mm. this issue of men always saying, move on. And it's like, uh, in our society, I'm sure you've heard about it. And I remember there was a time there was a tiff about it on social media. When a man cries foul that someone took advantage of me sexually, it's like it's really never believed. And most of when, in, when they're in a tender age, people always say it's a learning field or a testing field. What are your thoughts about that? I tell people all emotions you bury will come back to life. Hmm. All emotions you bury will come back to life. Emotions demand to be felt. You have to feel and process. Our bodies are meant to process, not to bury stuff. Mm. All right. Um, so even like for me, I had to learn the tools to know how to navigate the pain and the confusion and the and the like realizations that oh this is what this abuse meant and this is how it affected me and this is how i can learn and really grow from it not really move but grow from it you know and so i mean because first of all we live in a heavily patriarchal society where men are uh, uh, perceived as you know leaders and people who are strong all the time and providers and all that you don't particularly envision this person as being a victim of sexual abuse yes. mm -hmm. right and so and and many like even just victims generally you know and so you know we we think ah this is something a man can just shake off let me tell you so animals do shake trauma off because they don't have like memory like we do like the subconscious like we do but we cannot shake trauma off you know you have to process it yeah you have to go through the thing so that you can come out the way i did and it is hard work when did it come out when did you know that hey something actually happened to me someone abused me uh so for the sexual part yes um so because was, at least for the yeah. physical abuse yeah. you knew this is my dad yeah, this, yeah, and you yeah. knew that this was physical pain yeah. and it was emotional yeah. but for this other part i noticed you said before we went on the link that you were not aware yes i wasn't so i was going through therapy actually mm -hmm. during that time and of course there are like guiding questions a therapist will ask you to make you think about situations you've been through mm -hmm. And there's something I just, I, I don't remember what she asked, but I remember that thing hitting me like, wait a minute, something happened to me back there, mm. which I had never revisited ever since it happened. And when I looked at it with a fresh lens, everything came out like, oh my God, like this happens to me. And I tweeted about it. And wow. Twitter went ablaze that time. <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Just to add, to add to that, you know, it's, um, it takes a lot to feel confident and comfortable enough to share your story with people. Um, how do you think your experiences could have been different had maybe, let's say, you had uh, maybe more open communication about sex in the family? Because I did, uh, after listening to one of your episodes on your podcast, I remember you did mention that uh, growing up in your home, there wasn't as much freedom to talk about sex and, and all of that. So how do you think that kind of influenced your, your experience? There wasn't space to talk about anything i mean i was even afraid to tell my dad that you know i need underwear mm. you know or even like when a book had failed even just facing him telling him that i need a new book that was extreme sports mm. so growing up with that silence became systemic mm. and you know it, sh it it shuts your body down it shuts your self-confidence your self-esteem the way you look at yourself the way you perceive who you are um, your worldview is also are affected by these kind of things. So for me, I'm just like, if if things were different at home, I wouldn't have had to go through all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? You were going through therapy at what age? 30. You went through therapy. So uh, allow me just take you back. At 20 you is mm -hmm. when you were abused, sexually abused. Yes. At 10, 10, between 10 and 16, you were abused physically by your parents. Yeah. Now at 30 upon therapy, that is when it hit you yeah. that, hey, this, I've gone through something and with a fresh lens, you needed to re revisit it. Now, when you went to social media, because you said Twitter went ablaze, uh, the social media, did people believe you? Did people uh, castigate you? Because I know social media can be very ruthless sometimes. 
How did you go through that? Because I also know that you posted something else when about your depression, yeah. which we'll get to it in a, in a moment. But when you shared your story about your sexual abuse, how did people take it? Because I know many people or many men don't believe that fellow men yeah. are sexually abused. Mm. Yo, it was crazy. Mm. That time was crazy. It was crazy. And I mean, to be honest, like definitely I did get a lot of support from both men and women. But almost equally, there was a lot of cyberbullying. Mm. And like 90% of it coming from guys, from mm. men. Mm -hmm. And they were saying things like, yo, you must have enjoyed it. Mm. You're just looking for clout. There's no way a man can be raped by a woman. It's not possible. And this and that. And like in numbers. And it's like by the seconds, by the seconds. And the tweets are just streaming in. But I didn't tweet to look for validation or to, you know, put my case so that I can sound believable. I knew what I'd been through. And I was already used to telling my stories online anyway. So that was just a, like a new addition. But what changed about this particular story was the number of men mm -hmm. who reached out to my DMs mm. saying, yes. bro, this was me at 6, at 12, at 13. Mm. It was my uncle. It was our household. Mm -hmm. It was my aunt. It was an older cousin. It was my, my dad's friend. Mm. Wow. Now, and they're saying they're adults. Some of them are pastors preaching to congregations, but living with wounds they can't even tell anybody. Mm. They're saying they're struggling with intimacy in their marriages and they're afraid to tell their wives. It's crazy. Mm. There was one other story which was really triggering. Like this guy told me like he was sodomized by people he knew. Mm. And because of that anger, he went and hired goons to go, to go kill these guys. Wow. wow. Oh my God. I hope he didn't go with them. He did go through with it. I'm telling you, he was reporting what happened. Oh, wow. Because wow. he had never seen any man in his life talk about sexual abuse publicly. Yes. Uh -huh. I was the first. Yes. So it came out. It just came out <coughs> of yes, him. Yes, yes. It's crazy. So there's a lot of stigma around men coming out to speak out from their experience yeah. of rape, being sexually abused, physically abused. Yeah. So far, since you began being vocal about it, how more people began to speak about it? Like, can you say now people are actually owning their voices or does more need to be done? Do you feel like you need to do more? Mm. We all need to do more. Yeah. And it's, it's intersectional, you know, it, it cannot be just one frame that's going to make everything okay. You know, it's like us thinking, how are we making our relationships safe at home? Mm -hmm. You know, like, can we avoid some things kids go through, for yeah. example, that hinder them from speaking out when they become older? You know, like, there's just those small things. Yes. Can we recalibrate how masculinity functions mm -hmm. in this world? Can mm -hmm. we make men start seeing themselves differently? Because that same thing they think, uh, like, is a birthright, uh, oh, you're supposed to be a leader, you're supposed to be mightier and all that, is the same thing that is working against against them when yes. they need to express mm. pain. It's yes. the same thing. Yes. But because of how the economics of the world is, they're not able to connect the two. Yes. And this is where I am feeling that gap. I'm, okay. I'm letting them know these two things are actually working against you. Mm. So speak your truth. Be different. Mm. Onyango Tina says, speak your truth and be different. We're talking about surviving rape and overcoming depression listeners silent those ones on online what was their name on twitter we had and everyone on spice the spice team to nasema asante what is bertrand saying yes bertrand is saying um women sexually assault men so erotically that it takes you 10 or so years to realize that you were assaulted um and this is actually a very very good point this finish, actually touches finish, on finish that statement Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, it's a uh, this, this gender. Oh, this gender is is treacherous. Pull this under. So, and this this actually touches on what you what you were saying before the break about um, you know, a, a lot of the time, especially when you're young, 
maybe you are yet to have your first sexual experience and society places this pressure on us as men to be macho and to stand our ground. Yet these are the same things that play against us when it comes to actually being open about this. Mm -hmm. So for you, what was the defining thing that made you say, you know what, enough is enough and I have to actually say something? That that went back like when my my dad was abusive towards me that's when I started speaking up against things that I felt needed to be spoken about. And, you know, the older I grew, the more I realized, yo, man, there's a lot of shit going on in this world that needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak about those things. I want to speak about things that, you know, deny people justice, that, that make people go through a lot of pain. And, I mean, the things I witnessed, I spoke about them. So even this situation wasn't any different. I, I, I come to this world, I exist in this world first as a spirit and mm. then I just take human form that happens to be a man. That doesn't mean like I have to live with people's expectations just because I take this form. Mm. I'll die too early, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, it's so true. Yeah. So we we, we, we we are coming from, um, you know, you are bringing up uh, being a child and um you experience and we have very personally i'm very sorry you know i i hear stories of men being assaulted by women and i believe you yes. you know i choose to say i'm sorry and um now it's been 10 years and at the age of 30 is when you chose to be have therapy and to begin the journey of therapy but paint for us a picture in 10 years what led to you now saying okay you know what i need to take my mental health in con I need to take control yeah. of my mental health. So you, the experience happened and now life is going on. Yeah. Well, uh, those 10 years were probably the worst ever. Like they were full of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is from 20 to 30. Yeah. Uh, first off, you know, I, I already had trauma before the rape happened, mm. uh, which was like uh, childhood trauma. And then when the rape happened, I actually became hypersexual. Mm. 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 What do you mean by hypersexual? So it's like, like having too much sex to the point that you actually like don't attach any meaning to it. Wow. Was that your first sexual experience? Where the, the, with the house, house? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it was in that manner. And still now, like with the society I grew up in, when you're having a lot of sex as a guy, it's celebrated it's mm. like ah you're experimenting you're doing your thing especially in that age gap of exactly. early 20s yes. you know yeah. it's a but wild a time us are actually responding to trauma wow but I've we never don't about know that. Wow. that thing most of us most of the time call whole face has a lot going on because <laughs> yes. wow. it's like all these energies are coming out from There's so many story. years of suppression yeah, so mm -hmm. there are many things we miss there, you know. Um, and then things quietened down. I got to my, my like, mid-20s because mm -hmm. I got into a relationship and now it was, like, in one space and all that. But it was until 2015 when now like, I started, like, being intentional with my healing. Um, my mom and dad had fought again. Mm -hmm. and this, They were still at it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this time I took a risk. I called my parents to a meeting, mm. wow. which is like suicidal mm. here. And I told mom and dad, I, I want to talk to you, man. I've had enough of this stuff. Mm -hmm. right? You're 25 at that time. I, yeah, I was 20, 27, I, mm. I think. Mm. And <clears throat> so I talked to my mom separately. My mom and I were buddies, like we, we talk. And, and I could hear her out, nini, nini. When it came to my dad, I never knew what to expect because mm. you never called my father to a meeting mm. to yes. talk to him about how to run his family, mm. yes. you know. Yes. And about his wife. And about, yeah, and how he's acting around her, you know. So we have a sit down with dad and I mean, he said a lot of crazy things about mom that I remember. But then there was one particular statement he made that actually also changed my life. Mm -hmm. He said... And I quote him, I don't come to you with my problems because you think I'm weak. Wow. Wow. Straight up. Wow. That's so powerful. 
yo, and intimate and vulnerable. Yeah. Mm. I must have pushed him to the wall for that to get out. How yes. did you, how did it make you feel? I was, how did it make you feel? I, I startled because I was like, what? You know, like, yes. I never expected that to come out. And then I think I just remember something ticking in my brain and I just, I was taken aback and I was like, okay, there is something more going on that I want to understand. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I started humanizing my father mm. and looking at, he, looking at him as a human being who's also going through his own things. And he's been projecting a lot of that pain towards us. So I start going back to find out about his childhood because mm. I knew for me to heal, being him, him being the center of my pain, I had to understand where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. yes. And you also needed to forgive him. If I could. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, do I continue? Yes, yes. yes. please. <laughs> Kill me on time. So okay. I, I start looking for the stories. Yes. I mean, he grew up in a um, polygamous home. Mm. There were like 30 kids. It was a city. That village was a city. We were so many. Because mm. now uh, my cousins, we are many, many guys. <laughs> mm. And they had a, one father. And that meant like 30 children could not really get that fatherly bond and mm -hmm. attention that mm -hmm. all of them needed and coming from a poor family food and all those things it's survival all the time and so i mean their dad was also violent and what i came to realize was grandpa had been a soldier in the second world war mm -hmm. for the british in Burma, and a lot of african soldiers this happened to them when they were just bundled back to their villages and um, people thought they would just go on with their lives as if things are normal. Yes. But the war never ended in their minds. Uh -huh. So they projected it to their families. Yeah, like the post-traumatic stress yeah. now wow. came and, you know, they got into alcoholism, they became violent people. Sometimes I hear stories of like, you know, you're chilling with somebody and then they're telling you to take cover because yeah. mm. they think like, you know, the, yes, the enemies around and, and yeah. all that. Yeah. Mm. So And these stories are actually many around us. We just don't know about them. Yeah. Um, and so now starting to realize my mom told me that um, my, my grandpa really loved my dad. Hold that thought. Yes. We're talking about surviving rape and overcoming depression by Onyango Chino. When we come back, I want you to proceed where sometimes our parents project what has been projected to them as they're growing up towards us. You listen to Spice FM. The show is the adults in the room. You are the adults and the adults will be right back. Sugar and spice and everything nice up your life a very good evening to each and every one of you if you're joining us it's exactly nine o'clock the station is spice fm the show is the adults in the room today's conversation is a bit somber we're talking about surviving rape and overcoming depression with onyango otieno also known as the Rick's poet otieno you were sharing something before we went on a break yeah um, where was I? You were talking about that you were established from your mother and also you decided to make an initiative after your yeah. father made a statement, a profound statement, mm -hmm. that he never, he has never come to you mm -hmm. to share his problems. Mm -hmm. And you decided, you know, let me get to know where my father comes from. Yeah. And you told us your father was coming from a place of a polygamous home and uh, his home was more like a city, you and your cousins. 30 children. 30 children. And you mm -hmm. found out that also your grandfather was going, was a soldier mm -hmm. in the war. Also my grandfather was a soldier. Yeah. So something I can relate on that. But on your end, you felt like, hey, that particular pressure and abuse emanated from back then. Yeah. Please proceed. Yeah. So when I started getting a sense of, you know, where my dad was coming from, I think it started giving me some sense of direction for my own healing. Uh -huh. Because I started realizing that I've been carrying a lot of his pain. Yes. Yeah. You get? Mm. So in psychology, there's something called intergenerational trauma, which is like, yeah, trauma that is just passed down the years as if it's a skill. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know? mm. um, so, you know, he was just passing on the pain to me the way he knew how. It's very, like, very natural for it to happen. If you haven't healed it, you'll pass it on. And yes. he did not know that yeah. it was wrong yeah. or right. He didn't have that awareness, mm. you yes. know. Also because, again, his environment was enabled, enabled that behavior. It enabled violence from men. It enabled all that chaos mm. in our marriages and, and stuff. Um, and so that's the time, like, I started 
thinking differently even about him and about me you know because now i was like i need to get out of this stuff yes because it's hurting me and i can't keep carrying my father's burdens and then passing it on to other, yeah, other people to that other you because i was struggling with relationships I, I i had a hard time trusting people mm. um sometimes i i was really cold-hearted like i would leave a relationship today and go get into another the next time the next day and stuff like it was just i was yes. floating i had buried a lot of my emotions and i thought i was okay everybody always thinks they're okay yes you know? yeah. until something really drastic happens you're like wait a minute something is going on with me so i mean 2016 um happened at that time i was doing like uh, i was running an organization for young people to express themselves doing like using arts and poetry and stuff like that um and i mean for me i think i've always been really passionate about creating space for people to open up about who they are and what they're going on and stuff like that so it's late 2016 that um depression started coming at me because mm. i was going through a tough time um the, the organization wasn't doing so well and i was coming off a, a toxic relationship okay and then by the end of like early by early 2017 I actually felt suicidal again. Uh -huh. mm. This yeah. was the second time you're feeling suicidal. Yeah. The first time I was 16. Okay. Yes, I yeah. ran away from sure. home. I wanted to go die somewhere and it didn't happen. Mm. <laughs> and Thank this God. Time, yeah, <laughs> this time I'm 28, 29. Yeah. yeah. And this thing comes to me again. And I'm like, so I open up about it on social media mm. and I, I like talking. Yes. So I talked about it. I was like, guys, today I feel suicidal and uh, I feel depressed and I don't know what to do. Mm. You know? um january 2018 actually so i mean the floodgates opened again the same way with the tweet about rape and so many people came there and again the same thing people came to my dms me too i'm going through this and i'm going through that um but i i said you know i really want to understand why this feeling is familiar because mm. mm. i think if it comes back next time and mm. i don't know how to deal with it it will go because this was the second yeah. time yeah, yeah. yeah. so you are aware me. that this feeling needs to be dealt yeah, with yeah like okay. yeah and i mean all through all those years silently i had been curious to just keep on looking and looking and looking i think in my subconscious i had still been looking mm. and so it's like the universe was opening up that path for me slowly but surely um so when that that uh, that like the depression happened actually it opened everything to me now because now i now you know went on google and looked for suicide ideation and all this and then i came across mental health and yes. i was like then i came across post-traumatic stress and yes. i saw myself uh -huh. in, every, in everything everything i was like it all makes sense now yeah. you know and then i start going through therapy and now i'm taking through the steps of healing i'm giving the tools but at the same time i'm also documenting my healing journey because for me you know i'm i'm not those people who tell you you know just get up and move yes from that feeling because i understand you have to process it but i needed to show people that it is actually a process yeah mm. there are days like you know those first days i couldn't do anything so my friend my male friends would come over to my house they would cook for me they would open the curtains they would do the dishes for me mm. we had a dj also there so he'd do like live mixes in the house and then they'd go mm. they'll come to cheer you up. yeah yeah so on some days the only thing i would do was just spread my bed mm. and do nothing else mm. and that was enough okay yes. and i learned to just find peace in the small little progresses that i could make there's something i've noticed i've picked up uh, when you the first time you realized or you got a, a, an aha moment you went on social media and you talked about your case about being sexually abused and the second time also when you had your second uh, um, moment okay i don't know whether to call yes. it a moment that you you felt like you were suicidal you went to social media now where did you get the courage for that because many people would say i would i would tell you i don't know if i can share my problem in social media mm. some people just decide because there's a lot of cyber bullying yeah, of course. yes uh in different forms in different yeah. ways some people will be like hey no so and so is looking for attention mm. or so and so is looking for this or that or he's a liar or she's a liar how where did you get the courage within you to go to social media you didn't have friends and you said you could talk to your mom mm. wasn't that an option i did have friends even at this point yeah. it wasn't different 
Um, and my friends knew about what was going on. Mm. Um, I was used to writing my stories, as, but, but they were around gender-based violence because that is the nearest explanation I had at the yes. time about how I was acting out and, and the pains I was going through and all that. Um, so I, I, sh- I, I did share those stories publicly for like i mean i started doing these stories from as far back as 2012 i had okay. a blog that time and i used to write about stuff yeah. so it, they've just been a build-up but did, it, did the stories identify as you or yeah. were they just stories? no i've never hidden behind uh-huh. any mask like this is me mm. this is what i went through this is okay. what my dad did and everything okay. and i think i get a lot of that courage from my mom because my mom is like the most tenacious human being I know on this earth. Mm. And I think with time, because I've had to fight for my life mm. for so long, mm. I couldn't imagine doing that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I wanted to be free. Yes. And freedom to me meant I could talk. Mm. Now could that write. you mention your mom, you guys are close, huh? Yeah, yeah. How did, did you ever share your, your experience with the rape? Yeah, yeah the depression yeah. how did you re- how did she receive it how did it make you feel as a child well my mom is very understanding and i mean when i opened up about the rape she couldn't remember the house manager we were because it was a long time before mm. but she just said she was sorry wow mm. yeah she said she was sorry and that um there was nobody around to to talk to about that stuff mm. and all that and i felt really understood and validated mm. and i mean it just added to my healing mm. you know and even the depression like the every time i'm on tv they're always there she wants to watch me mm. and listen and listen and listen with my sister and sometimes my dad so she's been really supportive mm. yeah. and your dad you know come see, come see. It's, it's did you share there. the whole no. full story with him have you ever no. shared the full story why he's not you know for somebody who was my abuser mm-hmm. and who's caused so much pain in our household he's still processing okay mm-hmm. you know, he's not yet there like he's not at the end of the rope now he's like coming back now you guys can we have a conversation he's not yet there mm-hmm. mm. and i swore to myself that i'll never sit down with somebody who's not willing to understand me yeah. mm-hmm. i don't care who you are yeah if you're not willing to listen even if you are god mm. <laughs> i'll go my way yes does yeah. he know this is a bit personal yeah does he know that you go to platforms and you, yeah. you have a vlog, a blog mm. that you share out the story of what he did to you? Yeah, I mean, sometimes he calls me and is like, yeah, I've seen you in the paper. Mm. So he's aware. Very There's aware. There's no denial. Mm-mm. Has he ever said sorry? Nope. Mm. Do you wait for him to? Nope. Let me tell you, there's something my therapist told me and I'd love to share this. Yes. Okay. Two things. My therapist said, one thing, mourn the father you never had. Yes. He's alive, yeah, but mourn the father you never had. Yeah. Two, mourn the childhood that was robbed from you. Mm. Those two things also changed my life. Yes. Because I just felt lighter after that. I stopped waiting mm. for stories. I stopped waiting. And I'm like, all this magnificence that I am, yes. all this joy, all this power, how am I going to limit it from growth mm. by waiting for a story from somebody who's also not yet seen themselves? No, no. You've talked about therapy and I'm glad you are a man and talking about, and talking about therapy very openly. We're in a society where if you talk about therapy, people tell you that's a white man's problem or we do not do that here or do that. How has been the journey of therapy for you and is it something you can recommend for someone? In fact, I did study... Um, trauma healing to become a therapist because i felt you are also a therapist yes i am a trauma therapist mm. specifically yes. trauma therapist yes because i felt so many of our people need information um but now the gap comes between we have like the people who we've always known as psychologists mm-hmm. who you you go to see when you feel sick mm. like yes. a doctor yes yeah you know? but then we didn't have people telling stories mm. who would make us understand yeah. this is how this thing really works and this is how it happens and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I felt I could come in and teach other people, even other practitioners. We need more stories yes. to help people understand. 
it's not that people are just ignorant out of a vacuum. It's because they don't understand. There is yes. no language to express it. Yeah. Yes. But if we find more people to express the language, like, oh, okay, perhaps I do need help. Yeah. You know? And it's taking time because, for example, here we are speaking English. There is no word for depression in Turkana, mm. in Luo. Mm. All these things. We have similar words that could help people understand, but in normal everyday language, yeah. the words are not there. Schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, PTSD. Like these are complex English words, but uh, scientific words mm. for most people. Mm. Like your ordinary person wouldn't get them. So even at, as we speak, there is a, a mental health amendment bill in parliament right now that's yeah. being chaired by uh, Senator Sylvia Kasanga that we've been pushing yes. for. Um, I think the second reading passed today in Parliament. Yeah. And in that bill, um, there is a, a clause that says, like, we need, we are going to have storytellers and artists going to indigenous communities mm. to teach and sing and write to people in their, in their language Ooh. about mental health. Because we said we have to have this so that we can revolutionize how mental health is understood yes. in this continent because yeah. it's a continental issue, the thing about language barrier. Yeah. I want us, when we come from the break, I want you to talk about your artistry and how your artistry has enabled you or was, it, was there a disadvantage to it that you went into depression and all this? Because I came across a clip that you're saying, you being an artist, there are certain things that people expected you to do or to have or to be of higher standing. So when you spoke about the issue of, hey, I was abused when I was a child. I was sexually abused. I went through depression. Many people felt like, ah, huh? you, you yeah. of all people, you always talk. You're loud. You're a quiet person. You know, yeah. they took it in stride. So when we come back, I would like you to share from an angle of an artist, someone who's been there from a platform. And when you decide to speak your word, how people perceived it or how people took you to eat. If you join the conversation, we're talking to Onyango Otieno. We're talking about surviving rape, abuse, and overcoming depression. You're listening to Spice FM. If you have any questions for the gentleman, you can do that through our social media handles, Spice FM KE on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or you can call in on 0719-01-600. We also have an SMS code 40127. 401 in 1997, Barbara. <coughs> what was I finishing? There's something I was finishing. <laughs> mm. I know this primary school. Thing. You are not in primary, Barbara. Uh, uh, yeah. 1997. I was in, uh, yeah. Uh, you you is, think I'm young? This is Spice <laughs> FM. I never lie. You think I'm young? <laughs> .co.ke. Tell us the truth. I'm of my age. Yeah, to be I honest. I am 38 years old. Oh. And I'm proud of 38 years old. Mm. I never lie. Me, see now, keep your food. Okay. Uh, okay. So I that's why I think. <laughs> yes, I don't, I am not afraid. <laughs> so where were you in 1997? That's why I'm like, I need to remember where I was. Ah, yes. I think I was finishing KC, KCP. Aha. Uh -huh. You? I yeah. Know. One of those yeah, things. I can't even remember, my God. Back in 97. Hey, I think I was seven years old in 97. I was probably playing with, with toys and, you know, just being a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but do you yeah. know, where were you in 1997? I, um, I was in Gong. What was I doing? In because class three. Sorry? I was in Gong in class three. Wow. In class three. Yeah, some mm. school called Maasai Boys. Wow. Mm. Anyway. You like asking people questions, does not want to be asked <laughs> where she was of her age, but you know, when she hides it, yes. she has something to hide. <laughs> to hide, yes. <laughs> Surviving rape and overcoming depression. What are you learning, Arnold? Yes, I see a few uh, very interesting comments. Thank you so much for writing in, everybody. I see one from Am Amos Mwai. It says, hi, the whole team. I like the courage of Otieno by coming out and making his story, or for making his story as his turning point. It's a very hard as a man to share such story, unlike ladies. The positive part is that it is not to hinder you from you from where from where you are today. Uh, you've really encouraged me. So it's it's clear that people have are listening and they're hearing your story and they connect with it. You know that, like you said earlier, there's many people who have been through this but um, hide behind the veil of um, shame or guilt or not being aware enough about what they've experienced to come out and uh, and talk about it. Yeah. Mm. Someone has a question for you. Allow me to pick up a call. Mm. Hello, Spice. Hello. Hi, Faith. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. Salama Sana. Do you have a question for our guest? Before me, morning, Richard, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me say hi to Arnold Carrico and Otima Onyango. Hi. hi. Good evening. 
Okay. So, Faith, I need you to put your mouth next to your mic so that we can hear you better. Sasa tunakupata asante. Sasa nasema hivi. Mm. The topic of today is so much emotional. Yes. And in fact, I have <laughs> actually it's an experience in Kenya. Mhm. It's not that I've not I've not shared it out. Mm. So, actually, you know very well that I'm a person living with disability, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I know that. So far, at one point when I was uh, still young, at around age 10 to 12. Yes. I faced I faced a uh, sexual abuse from one of my uncles. Mhm. Cuz uh, he was like touching my private parts and you know it was at night. Mhm. And my mother was not even around to go to me na brother yangu peke yake. Mhm. I felt like I need to talk to talk about this you know like he stripped me naked mm. I can lava kwa floor eh? but then before he, before he does any before he did anything I think he came to his senses and then he let me go don't let me slap mm. 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 I just appreciate what you know go for coming out and encouraging others kama uko na shida speak it out mm. yeah unajua mimi pia mm sasa napitia shida sana so i never talked about it before so you have that trauma yeah anytime i come around him mm actually niko na feeling that i have seen sipendi kukuwa mali yako because you remember i remember see when it's a how you Okay. Sante sana. Thank you darling. And Paul for what happened. Otienor, what are your thoughts about dealing with post traumatic stress or stress on uh more so that has been caused by sexual abuse or abuse from our parents whether physical or emotional? I know you're now in a different place because you've gone through the therapy and you're a therapist. But for someone who's listening to us, despite therapy, are there other avenues? You know um when your body is abused mm. you become disconnected from it yeah because mm. your personhood was wounded in such a way that and it was wounded by physical abuse yes yeah? so physical abuse could be sexual could be beating or mm. stuff it disconnects you from yourself and the only other way to reconnect yeah is to find tools that will help you get back to who you were before this abuse happened mm-hmm. yeah so it could be very different things for one person maybe they like writing yeah for another person maybe they like hanging out with friends yeah but there is something very particular i want to say when you are abused it's your nervous system that gets affected okay because mm. you feel the nerves in your body like like the way faith is saying every time she's near that guy mm. these emotions come back mm-hmm. and it's now years later yes so our nerves are what store our emotions these wires all around our body when you have an unhealthy nervous system it's very easy to be anxious all the time to be in panic mode all the time to be on survival mode all the time mm. um and you know you could make hasty decisions or bad decisions and all that and this could be either you're in danger or fear mm. okay yes. your body doesn't know danger mm. and fear it's like same thing mm. the way your brain registers yes. registers it okay so there might be a need to find ways to get back your healthy your nervous system to be healthy again so what am i talking about i'm talking about you know all of us have nervous systems mm-hmm. okay the reason why we say you know um women get together and then they get through things together is because their nervous systems connect mm-hmm. yes 
okay mm. so that then that's why us guys find it a little harder because we don't connect much yes. we don't we don't talk about our vulnerabilities so mm. our nervous systems don't connect mm. okay so when you when when you bring your energy and you bring your energy and he brings his and we come and i come with the problem mm. we are all connected together yes. mm. and then you feed me mm -hmm. and i feel safer and mm. then that thing is just washed and women women do it better than men more like mm. more than men yes. even better if, if that's say mm. okay mm. so connection is one of the biggest surest ways of healing okay because like that way maybe you can tell somebody you see around you and they just tell you yeah i understand yes if you see this person more often you actually your body actually starts getting used to them yes you get mm -hmm. so you 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 feel now excitement when mm. you see them when you talk about them when you think about them mm. so our friendships our connections are the surest way to heal Mm -hmm. if you can't afford therapy now for but there are some instances where things are really dire and they need professional help yeah and those ones for sure like yeah people need to there's um, always a mentality that professional help is expensive and it's not accessible yeah. and it's not possible to reach and get yeah. in your experience how was it how was it accessing um professional help to be honest mm -hmm. I I I have you know a bit of a name like people know me here and there. Ooh. So when I needed to Carigo. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, God. like guys. <laughs> hey. That's Carigo for you. Yeah. <laughs> when I needed to seek help, people were there for me. Wow. Yes. Okay. Mm. I'm I'm very 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 privileged and I always acknowledge that. Mm. For most people that's not the reality. That's mm. true. Yes. That's not the reality. Mm. Guys die alone. Guys even put up a Facebook post nobody sees. Mm. Yes. You know, people see it few days later. Oh yeah, mm. and then they come and put like a thousand comments there, you know, like mm. it's very people many people's realities it's very very different. Mm. Mm. Yes, therapy is really really expensive. Okay. You know like even if you're paying even 2000 shillings for an ordinary Kenyan mm. for, for a session yeah, yeah it's a lot of money for yes. a lot of people yes. okay and that's why we are really pushing for this mental health amendment bill mm -hmm. because it will now make uh, mental health um, medication and access and treatment more more accessible mm. to yes. the ordinary mwananchi Yes. Okay. And even right now, Madari Hospital does offer counseling services yes, it does. For, for free. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, And people just don't have that information again because, you know, it's not like, you know, with, when HIV and AIDS came and then the government was like more apt with giving information and all that. That's what we want to happen with mental health. Yes. yes. So that more people can have information. I like where we're going the conversation. We're talking about also issues of mental health. And it's been a conversation from last year that has been picked up more also during the pandemic and even without that we have people who are going through it we have people who are surviving rape who are trying to overcome depression who have been physically and emotionally and sexually abused and today we had a privilege of having Onyango Otieno if you have any questions plug into our social media handles Spice FM KE on Instagram Facebook and Twitter or our SMS code 40127 or if you have something to share you can call in on 07 joining the conversation it is 37 minutes past 7 o'clock the station is Spice FM the the show is the adults in the room today we're talking about surviving rape surviving physical emotional even mental abuse when you think about it and overcoming depression we have someone in our studio who's called Onyango Otieno also commonly known as Rick's poet who has been sharing his story sharing his journey to where he is right now now Rick's can I call you Rix? Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. more people call me Rix. Rix, oh, mm. oh, thank you. Now I can feel comfortable. Yes. Oh, now, <laughs> Karigo, go away. I've seen how you're looking at him, and I don't like it. Let me just say it openly. You know, I say it. I don't like how you're looking at him. <laughs> no, now we're on a short term basis. Eh? Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We progress. Again. Short term names. We progress. Yes, we are. Yeah, we're on short term basis. <laughs> short term names. Yes, Rix. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I've seen you. Uh, you've talked about being an advocate, and there's several things you are very strong and passionate about and some of them are related be are related because of what the journey you've gone through how did you get into advocacy it was when uh after my suicide ideation in 2018 yeah and uh, found out information about mental health and me starting to tell my stories i felt there was a huge need 
for more advocacy on that area because, you know, I went online and couldn't find African stories on mental health. Right. They weren't there, man. Mm -hmm. Even like just on the scope, like most times it was white people talking about mental health yes. struggles. So I said, okay, um, I'm going to start up stories in Kenya. Mm. Yeah, and, and connect to other Africans. And because this documentation has been one of the things that have made it, like made the world misunderstand Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no documentation about our stories. Mm. So you wanted to be that person to tell yeah, that story. Like, and I'm um, like among the people because oh, yeah. I know mm. we are many. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And what about this issue when I'm talking about advocacy? I've also know, n realized I, co I decided to look for some hashtags mm. and in those hashtags your names came out. Issues oh. of masculinity. Mm. What are your thoughts about that? The toxic part. This, and of course I liked the part that you shared issues of uh, us thinking like men should not be vulnerable and it's high time we realize they're just like us they're emotional being because i've seen some of your comments that you fight off people online i may tell guys off man mm. you do straight eh? up yes I, I, there's nothing to fear if your beliefs take away somebody else's beliefs or rights for example if your beliefs takes away somebody else's rights there's a there's a problem yes. what are your thoughts about men who don't believe you mm. most of men it's their problem like <laughs> if 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 you don't believe me mm. but you respect people mm. that's okay mm -hmm. i don't have a problem with it. i have a problem with you hurting others in the name of this is what you believe should li life should be mm. that shouldn't go yeah yeah that's let, let me ask um a question when you are going through depression and you're overcoming it day by day yeah you know he said something like even making your bed was an achievement so um, I know Barbara had asked this question, but I want to ask it on a different angle because now I'm depressed. I don't have money, access to therapy. Maybe I don't have friends to talk to. I don't have the resources, you know, mm. life, guys. Yes. Mm. Um, what small little things can I do on my own? Because I understand it's more of the mind. Yeah. It's mind over matter. So what small, I see like, um, I've seen stories where people say they wrote, they sang, you know, they decided to go for a walk. I mean, what do you, what, what did you do specifically, mm. inclusive therapy, that you feel in the absence of therapy, it still contributed heavily for recovery every day? Mm. Yeah. And still does because you have to keep at it. Yeah. That's very important uh, to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one particular thing I remember doing, because mm -hmm. I grew up with 90s music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I cleared my uh, f the music in my phone, my playlists, and put specific 90s music, mm -hmm. the music that made me feel good mm. when I was growing up. Yes. You know, the like early 2000s as well, coming off to mid 2000s thereabout. Um, and the memories, the, the songs evoked in me. There was something when I was younger, when my dad and I were closer, he, because my dad's side loved rumba and lingala a lot mm. yeah i saw you online dancing i i dance all the time mm. <laughs> so so my dad had this little sanyo radio and he would put music on it and put me on a table and tell me to dance for him mm. so it became like a bonding thing and we ah. grew up watching music videos together so for me the the songs reminded me of those good happy days you mm. know so i'm very particular with the kind of music i listen to because during that healing time, every time a song would come and the next one and the next one, they would help my energy come back, help yes. my energy come back, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and so also like when I was growing up, my, my mom was very particular with us making our beds. So it was like a serious thing. Mm. And mom didn't give, she didn't care that you were a boy, that now you were just to be left to your own devices. Yes. You had to take care of yourself. Yes. So I became so good at making beds so much that even like in, during my high school years that like it was really recognized. Wow. So I used that. You're one of those people who had corners on their beds. Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> it was like, I've been I didn't an look, artist I for a long time. I didn't like those people. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> but to see like corners on your shelf. Yeah, you sure. Nah. So you have to make up by yourself. Yeah. 90 right. degrees corners. The bed is yours. Come on. Yes, <laughs> yes. You're just expressing yourself guys life is about expression yes. so you want to express on the bed yeah express <laughs> yourself uh, it's your essence it's mm. everywhere spread it man spread mm. the love spread the joy mm. so i use that and um th those days like just waking up yeah taking my time yes. uh, to spread the bed 
gave me so much peace. Yes. Because now you wake, you wake up in a cringed bed shit and then you make it clean and, and, and you know, spread out and mm. it looks so nice. Mm. It actually organizes your mind. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's so, very true. So that was very helpful. And then other things like, like, like dancing. So uh -huh. and this is very scientific as well. There's something called somatic experience, which yeah. is like pertaining the body. Um, when you move about, movement is very pertinent to healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to move. Sometimes even when you're depressed and you feel like off, yeah. you're, you're told, take a moment. Yes. Yeah. So just moving your body to another room mm. uh. shakes your head a little mm. bit. You know, take yes. a walk. It shakes your head a little bit. Yeah. So those little things, yeah. for some people, it's washing dishes, actually. They mm. like cleanliness. I see that a lot on yeah. social media. Yeah. Mm. The guys washing who just, dishes. Yeah, I see yeah. people say when they wash dishes and they're going through anxiety, yeah. it's therapeutic. It calms them down yeah. yes. completely. They, you know, that thing and mm. so f even for me like when i get the energy to actually do the dishes that feeling also comes and you mm. just feel like you're in a good space mm. some people take a walk some mm. people want to wrap in the house some, mm. it could be some people cook some people cook <laughs> actually <laughs> yes <laughs> now <Nah, I'm really laughs> why are you guilty yeah. about myself <laughs> <laughs> i bet you are talking about, about, about me <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you know he hates <laughs> cooking <laughs> and he only but loves he cooking cooking for women <laughs> yeah it's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so I, 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 I gotta ask mm -hmm. because I'm sure it's running through most of our minds but for myself <laughs> okay have you forgiven your dad I want you to answer that question when we come back okay and when you're going to tell us about forgiving your dad you're also going to talk about intergenerational trauma if you've dealt with it and whether or not you will carry it to your children yeah. would you spank them or not spank them in the conversation, this is Spice FM. The show is the adults in the room. We're talking to Rick's Poet, also known as Onyango Otieno, surviving rape and overcoming depression. Before we went on the break, uh, Karigod asked you a question. Have you forgiven your father? And I also wanted to ask, in that process, yes, Karigo? Yeah, first let him answer if he's forgiven. Yes, I was just recapping, darling. Oh, it's called recap. Sorry. Because <laughs> I, I want him to answer that question. And, and he will. Eh, okay, cool. Yes, Karigo had asked you a question <laughs> before we went on a break. Whether you've forgiven your father, and I also had asked, would you think about spanking your children oh, in yeah. future when you get a family? I have forgiven my dad. Um, I understood all those things that he went through. I just didn't excuse how he decided to project. Mm -hmm. mm. But I forgive him. I love him. I actually wish him the same healing yes. that I've been through. I wish him a better life. He ne he deserves to live a, a peaful life, mm. not just tight tightened up by his former pains and all that. So I don't have any ill feelings about him. Okay. Uh, it's only that I also have my healthy boundaries when it comes to to him. You know, because you can love somebody from far. Yes, mm. from a distance. You feel like, mm. you know, you can be close to them all the time. But we talked once in a while. Actually, it was his birthday on 31st May and we did something for him at home. Um, yeah, so maybe some a lot, a huge chunk of it is work in progress. Um, but yeah, it's those people I love from far. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. I don't believe in spanking kids. Um, I believe healthy parenting can involve engaging kids' minds. And kids learn more from the environment, more than what you tell them. Our brains are simulation machines. We repeat what we see, even as adults. So mm -hmm. when the adults around the child behave amicably, mm. behave yes. in a mature way, solve conflicts in a mature way, that's what, that's what will discipline the child, okay? Mm. Not, not violence. Not yes. violence. Yes, mm. that's a very good point. Steve Irungu says, I'm extremely sorry Tino to what happened to you I actually went through the same situation I was molested in high school by a male teacher I know it is painful and by just continue Arnold I know it's that a bit it's, of distance I know that it's painful and by the grace of God I survived even boys are also sodomized by people who are entrusted to take care of them it's high time to have such conversations it will help many men including myself speak out against vices period I've actually read that particular comment because that particular listener is one of our day one's listener. And uh, I, tr I, tr I treasure myself as having a very good memory, but I'd never seen that statement from yes. him. Yeah. So that is why I read. And a lot of men never speak out. Now, you have a platform that you've been helping a lot of men. I noticed that when I was just flipping through. 
would you like to plug that in if there's anyone who needs to reach out yeah. or if there's anyone who needs assistance yeah. are you open to that because i saw you tweeted somewhere that you and you've also said on this table that you're a therapist mm -hmm. would you be open yeah so 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 how how i'm working around that is um i have been supporting uh some boys and men who came out to me that they had been sexually abused um probably for the last one year now and what i do is i connect them to therapists mm -hmm. yeah um and i mean it was difficult to start in the beginning so so what i did is like i i fundraised and i'm still fundraising even now i'm constantly fundraising because we still do not have enough organizations that fund situations where boys have been abused we know of the girls because it's all everybody knows but with the boys it's a little harder because they don't come out mm -hmm. that easily so they feel safe with me because they know my story it's the only way they've talked about even like even with stevens like you would never know unless yeah he heard it from somebody else mm -hmm. who looked like him yeah. you know so with me that's what i do and i i also have like private practice therapy sessions for those who are able to pay because it's even like with the resources i get from there that i have energy to support these other guys mm. okay so yeah that's how it works what else do you do uh so i'm a i'm a i, I am a poet mm -hmm. <laughs> I write and perform poetry mm -hmm. um, on um, on um, reproductive health and rights, on social justice, mm. eroticism. Um, I love expressing myself um, and masculinity and mental health. Yes, I, of course, I'm a therapist as well. Um, what else do I do? So I guess the the question is, how can people find you? Ooh, where, where, do, where do we, we where do we source you? all this goodness? It's, it's oh, so I also operate a podcast. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. um, so I run a podcast called Afro Masculinity Podcast. I love your hoodie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Actually, it's I thought you were going to say I love the podcast. What is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but the, the hoodie is for the, the podcast. Hood, yeah, the podcast. Yes. I even forgot. Yeah. So what is Afro Masculinity? Was. What does it do? This is my podcast, mm -hmm. and it is also like the name of the safe space I operate for the boys. Um, so I interrogate the complexities of African masculinities mm -hmm. um, and maybe a short example would be like telling stories of, of men like the next story on the podcast is of this Zimbabwean who lives in Harare as a sex worker, as a gay sex worker wow. mm -hmm. who identifies also as a Christian mm -hmm. and has two kids with a woman mm -hmm. stories. Wow. So these are all complexities that we're not used to everyday mm -hmm. life, you know, and men are just held up because they can't talk they can't talk and mm -hmm. if these platforms are available more to them then their stories will come out and that's what i want to do for the african continent but for me the other thing is i really want the world to understand africa mm -hmm. i want african men to start understanding themselves yes. and understanding each other so that's that's the work of the podcast as well i'm currently working on a book um, a poetry book mm -hmm. um that's gonna it's titled poems to my father and in it, I'm just telling the stories the p through poems of mm. what childhood was like, how teenagers like, and now who I am now. Yes. What are your social media handles if someone wanted to reach out directly? Yeah, Twitter at Rixpoet, that's R-I-X-P-O-E-T. Um, Instagram, the same, R-I-X-P-O-E-T. Then Facebook, Onyango Otieno. Or if you just Google Rick's poet, you and there are from masculinity. Does it? How does one link or get to hear about it? So you uh, you can just check out SoundCloud or all major podcast platforms. Just search for Afro Masculinity Podcast. It's the only podcast called that yes. anywhere in this world. Yes. And um, you're gonna find me. Just search Google Afro Masculinity. You're gonna find me. Afro Masculinity. Yes. Now, if you're wondering how my day was or my evening is ending, I am in the midst of podcasters. I don't oh, know yeah. if that is a word. Yes. Karigo is a podcaster. Oh, is yeah. it a podcast? Is it a podcast? <laughs> I own a podcast. Oh, yo, that's what I own, sir. I didn't yes. know how to call you guys. <laughs> yes. Arnold also owns a podcast. Rick Spoit owns a podcast. And me, I am just a king's daughter. <laughs> 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 daughter <of> a <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who plugged into the show to Nasema Asante Sana. Today was Shout Out Thursday. So all my love, 
all my support goes to you, our listener. Thank you for plugging into the show. Thank you for making time to listen to us and to listen to Onyango Otieno. For those who actually tweeted, commented on our social media handles, on our SMS code, we shall read them. Arnold and our Shida Kusoma Kiswahili. Most of you actually read them in Swahili. And uh, today, because of the time, we were not able to read all of them, but we'll make time to do that tomorrow on behalf of the spice team and most importantly on behalf of rick Spoit, thank you for joining us and to anyone who has been sexually abused or molested remember to speak out 